are live with Ms. Andrea Hamilton, CEO of the Finer Things Zeta Phi Beta Queen. The Finer Things 1920. The Finer Things 1920. I stand corrected. Yes, ma'am. Welcome to Talk and Ship. Well, thank you, Kendra. I am so excited um, to have been invited. What a great opportunity. So thank you for having me. You are so welcome. Well, I was super excited about this one just because I'm an HBCU grad and I know several sisters of Zeta Phi Beta that are just always very full of joy, very authentic, sisterly, loving. I mean, you name it. I love my Zeta, my Zeta Queens. And when I found out that you guys had a box, I then realized like, wow, sororities, to see that you guys are being innovative and in coming into the e-commerce space which i feel like is unheard of it's innovative so we're definitely going to continue the conversation here as far as what made you out of the thousands of sisters that you have well thank you kendra i am so excited um to have been invited what a great opportunity so thank you for having me you are so welcome well I was super excited about this one just because I'm an HBCU grad and I know several sisters of Zeta Phi Beta that are just always very full of joy, very authentic, sisterly, loving. I mean, you name it. I love my Zeta, my Zeta Queens. And when I found out that you guys had a box, I then realized like, wow, sororities and I don't know if any fraternities are doing this. Correct me on this. I don't but think so. I'm, I'm happy to see that you guys are being innovative and in coming into the e-commerce space, which I feel like is unheard of, is innovative. So we're definitely going to continue the conversation here as far as what made you, out of the thousands of sisters that you have, why did you feel like that this is an opportunity that I can step on? Tell us a little bit more about your brand, and then we'll get into where you are with transitioning and scaling. Happy to tell our story. So... The Finer Things 1920 was kind of evolved from this, from a few different places, really, um, definitely to your point about seeing this gap in the Greek paraphernalia space for Zeta women specifically, um, and specifically with um, like subscription boxes. But I have always loved gifting. I love giving gifts. I, I like the idea of it. And I love the, the, the old saying, it's better to give than it is to receive. Um, and I started giving boxes to my line sisters. We get together every year, um, or we try to at least. And a part of our ritual is Secret Sara. And we pick our names and we try and figure out like, what are you going to get for your Sara? And, and I've known these ladies 20 years. So it's always a joy to put together something that's really special for, for them. And as I, I do that process and I, I give to them, there's nothing that's more special than getting like that custom gift. And the, the problem was that when I went to look for things that were like Zeta specific, that were up to the standard that I would want to give, it wasn't there. And I started looking around at the marketplace a few years ago, and I saw that other sororities were innovating in this way. They were bringing a subscription box to the market, and they were doing some amazing things. And there really wasn't a box that was, um, you know, catering to a Zeta woman. And my background is advertising and marketing and digital. And I just started thinking like, this could be a thing. Like I went home, I did some research, I bought a domain name and that was it. Um, and started planning for something that I really didn't know a lot about, but I definitely had this love for Zeta. And I had this love for what we as finer women represent and that I knew that we had an opportunity to do something that was not being done in this space. Um, and, you know, three years, almost four years later, here we are um, growing rapidly, just expanding all over the place. And it's exciting. It, it, it is exciting to see something that started from an idea, sitting around a table, just thinking about how you can take one idea to the next, to the next, and then all of a sudden you are, you are birthing a brand. 
and that's exciting. Amazing. I love that you just got up and went ahead and bought the domain name. Apparently, there was no business plan. There was no speculation. And Mm -hmm. it was just your passion for what you were already doing. And was like, how can I monetize this? How can I make this more shareable? What better way to do that than e-commerce? And you said three or four years ago, um, e-commerce, let's just say like, it wasn't as, we weren't as dependent on it as we are now for like 2020. We just, it was always there, but now it's like, we need that. And it's a convenience that I don't think anyone wants to let go. Um, so good job. Like you got ahead of the curve. All the other people were doing it. You mm-hmm. easily adapted that, took those ideas and apply your your blue. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we really, we really did. And I mean, that's a, a good point about just kind of coming into a market and not really knowing. And, and a business plan, listen, I've written a business plan here, there, and before. And sometimes you just have to go with your gut and you just have to kind of figure it out as you go, because sometimes those things become and, and, and people who write business plans and execute against them. That's great. Um, that wasn't me. I, I literally had this idea and started talking to people and other Saras and other friends about like how this could happen and started watching and observing the market and was like, okay, okay. Doing some research, doing that study and just said, apply, apply, apply passion with pressure. And here we go. And, and that's what happened. And, and over time, <laughs> you evolve the business plan and, and you just say, like, I'm going to do it. And it was a big leap of faith, um, but I'm glad I took it. I'm really glad I took it because seeing the impact of the brand on the sisterhood is like mind blowing. When you, walk, you know, and I, I, uh, maybe it was a year ago when we were all out in, in, you know, you know, with one another, I walked into a conference here in the state of Florida and I was excited because the brand was everywhere. She was, she was being worn in backpacks. She was worn in jackets. She was, she Yay. was just, all the pearl earrings were there. And, you know, a frat brother said to me, sis, you're everywhere. And I was like, that's exciting. I, and I'm humbled. I'm so humbled by that. But it is a beautiful feeling to know that you are beautifying a sisterhood that you love. You know, these are the women who I always say fiercely represent Zeta Phi Beta, and we're doing everything we can to give them the finer things. Congratulations to moment. you. Congratulations to you. Phenomenally said. And I'm sure when everybody sees you at the conference and you see finer things, finer things, I'm sure they're like, hmm. How much money is she making? Like, <laughs> stay out my business. You know, you know, you know we, we are we are blessed and highly favored, so we thank you. Um, but you know, these beautiful things do not make themselves, and they are not cheap. So we we apply the best, the finest, because we are the finer women, and Here we deserve is. the finest, expensive, or not feel like their quality. And that's that's one thing we really, really strive to do is provide a level of quality that we're not seeing in Zeta for Zeta um, paraphernalia. And we hope that we are pushing other vendors um, and and raising the standard for other vendors in how it is that they come to market with items for women of Zeta Phi Beta. That was gonna be my next question. I'm glad you said something about the quality of your products because when it comes to paraphernalia, it's hard to find. And like you said, the vendors are limited. So it's almost like you don't have a choice. When you find a vendor, you just, pick something just because it's there and you don't know the next time you'll run across something. So would you say that that was one of your major challenges as you continue to evolve? What was that like sourcing the right vendors Mm -hmm. and your boxes, Um, you know, keeping something fresh in there, something that maybe they have not seen before? I mean, how how creative can you get in this space when you have those source limitations? You know, the beautiful thing is that we are only limited by our creativity and there is a lot and there was a lot of paraphernalia in this space, Um, but a lot of times Saras would only come in contact with it when they're at conference, like in bulk. So like we were talking about, just the evolution of e-commerce has kind of 
up the playing field, level the playing field, if you will, because now SARAs have the ability to go online and search Zeta paraphernalia or a subscription box and be served all of these different options. And in that respect, you really have an opportunity to study the market, understand the market and innovate above what is there. So that's really what we've been striving to do is look at the landscape and say like, this wasn't there. One of the things we, you know, kind of name the business for the finer things, we are the finer women. It is a founding principle of our organization. Um, and it is really kind of the cornerstone that sets us apart from the other the sororities of the divine nine. And, you know, it is a thing to be said that you are a finer woman. So we really took that principle of finer and elevated it even more. So that gave us a different playing field. We didn't have to, and at the at the time, we didn't have to, to have Zeta Phi Beta, those Greek letters. We weren't licensed at the time when we started, but Sarah's really connected with that and they really ran with it. Now today we are a licensed vendor of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. So we have the ability to kind of build upon finer and build okay. upon all of the shield, the usage of the shield, the usage of the Greek letters and everything under the umbrella. Wow. So the, kind of the ways that we innovated. So from a supplier perspective, what's interesting is that because we've been creative, because we've been innovative, we go direct. Um, you know, we, we source our own vendors, um, you know, across the world, and we determine what it is that we want to bring to market based on themes, based on ideas, based on trends um, that we're seeing. Um, and we pick a theme and we develop a theme for every single quarter that we're bringing a box to market. Um, and we try to intermingle that with things that may be important to um, the sorority calendar. Maybe it's the the start of the sorority year, or it is um, a, our typical, you know, summer uh, transition into summer where you might be traveling or you may be focused on, you know, mental health or physical health or things of that nature. So we leverage so many different things to get us to the point where we're creating a box with vendors who aren't typical, you know, that just are, are here as suppliers who are great garment makers, who are artisans, who are jewelers, um, and they are the ones that help us really kind of push the envelope in terms of creativity and what it is that we bring to the plate. Necessary to understand the work that goes into creating a curated box because it's not just me open up a catalog and say, okay, we're going to put a cup, we're going to put a shirt, we're going to put this. There's thought behind it. What season are we in? So I'm sure those watching are going to appreciate knowing, okay, this isn't just something that she found some surplus product and divided them and put it into a box and sent them out, you know, it's less likely that the things that you have are uniquely sourced. So you're going to have something unique in that box. It's probably going to be something that you've never seen before. And you're probably not going to see it anywhere else outside of finer things because we made this specifically for you for this time of season for it. So that is valuable within itself and it's hard to do. So yes, but um, I know what it takes to source and plan and um, meeting certain deadlines, like you said, you're on a, you're a quarterly box. I can't imagine you having to do this month over month and also your, your sister's feeling like, okay, I got too much stuff now. So it's spaced out enough. That took thought. That took a lot of planning and strategy to understand your market, the frequency and what to put in it and when. So yeah, definitely. No, that was all valuable. And that's, I just wanted to kind of summarize that real quick. Um, put it in a nice little box as far as why that was important for you to um, to share with us. So thank you. A common objection that I received, especially when I'm talking to a Black-owned business, like, well, we provide jobs and we don't want to take those jobs away from um, the people in our community. So we rather just continue to work with everything in-house, which is totally fine. Respect that, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's also a point where businesses realize that the people that I'm employing in my community, I could be giving them a more substantial role in my company to continue to scale and grow. Um, not saying that packing boxes is important or a good job or anything like that. It's just that, hey, you're good at marketing. I need your SEO skills versus you packing these boxes to go out because that money's made. That just needs to get out the door. I can really put that in cruise control, right? Yep. So how did you leverage your business 
with maybe I'm asking that the wrong way. Um, how are you keeping the community in the forefront and scaling with a fulfillment partner? What is your what is your vision for that for keeping the community in the loop um, while working with Ship Bob? I think for us, we've been really kind of insulated, you know, starting a business like this extremely niche, uh, you know, clientele that we have kept it very much in house in terms of who we're working with and who we're partnering with. Like we're a super lean team. And I mean, like, nice. you know, in terms of, yeah, I shout out to my family who has packed boxes, my mom and dad, my kids, my boyfriend, yeah. who, you know, that's our core community as well as Soros who offer their expertise in terms of the, our product team um, and helping with understanding what goes into a box. So that footprint of our community is really small at this point. Um, and it really needed to be because we wanted to keep the the ideas and the product offerings very pure um, and very much um, secretive, quite honestly. Um, you know, we want Saras to have an experience that is a surprise. Um, and so as a result, we've been very quiet and we've been very um, you know, purposeful in, in the fact that we have a very small footprint in terms of our team. That being said, now that we're at a point where we can stretch our legs a little bit and bring on a partner like Ship Bob, this now opens up the opportunities for the business to grow in a different way. Um, you know, I'm about structure and process and procedure and automation and those things when you are kind of scaling this kind of business are really, really key. So the hope is that, you know, from a community footprint that we'll be able to bring on some more talent that helps the business grow over time. You know, we're three and a half, almost four years old. We're, we're almost four years old now. Um, and with the growth that we're seeing, we know that that possibility is definitely on the horizon, but Absolutely. still formulating. Yes. I want to know more. Um, I want to know more about what your ultimate vision is. How many, how many Soros are registered as Beta Phi Beta? What is the potential? Like if there was to go a box for every Soror, what does that global potential look like? Where are we going? You know, Where are we going um, with this? You know, Zeta is always growing. We're a sisterhood of over 125,000 Soros. Um, you know, and that is a force. And we, the reality is it would be great to be able to see every Sara active or non-active um, have a box. I, you know, even if it was 5% of that, you know, total pie, that would be incredible. I, I think speaking for the team and, and thinking about this, um, you know, holistically, we just want to continue to grow and provide Saras with something that is unique and special and of the highest quality because they simply deserve it. Um, and, and we want to, again, raise the standard for all of these other vendors who are in the space and, and seeing us come in and offering Saras something that is uniquely and custom designed for them. That is that is it. So in terms of, of you know, that number, I don't think I have a number in mind. I just know that quarter over quarter, we, you know, we forecast, we plan, we execute, and without question, we leave Saras behind every single quarter because we fill up. So that's a great feeling. I think the point where we get to it, where they're like, there's no one else out there who wants it, um, then we'd have to, you know, look at things. But at this point, um, there's so much opportunity in Zeta um, it's for us to not just do these boxes, but to continue to make a mark on the entire organization. We have auxiliaries. We have a, a box for our, our, um, I like how you said active and non-active, like non-active sisters. I know how you feel, but you can still get a box though. Come over here. You know what? <laughs> and, and, and we, we, I was inactive. I mean, I, I have probably spent more time inactive than I have active, <laughs> be told. And I don't think that we recognize like how important something like this is 
to a Sarah who isn't active because this is this could be her path that way back. Zeta tugs at your heartstrings. You see your Sarahs out there. They're they're active. They're in letters. They're representing. Um, and you're just trying to find your way back and you don't have any updated nail yet. You need some stuff. So the finer things, the box is perfect for you. You get three to four to five pieces, depending on what it was. And you're like, okay, I'm back. And we've definitely had that conversation with Sarah's who are like, I just re got reclaimed. I just came back to the sisterhood. And this is so perfect for me because I've been out of it for a while. So it, it is for everyone. It is for your undergrad. It is for your newly reclaimed. It is for your um, graduate Sara. So there's there is something here for your amikai when they cross over. So we, we, are, we are proud to be serving these niches in our organization um, because there, there, there's more, there's room for opportunity for us to do more there. Yeah, I love that. They so you're definitely inspiring um, sorors that probably just slipped by the wayside, got busy with life, and someone gives them a box, and they're just like, I forgot how to get into the dirty side of things. Let's get Ooh. into the dirty side of finding out or having that, like I like to say, your oh ship moment where you were just like, pump the brakes, wait a minute, this is growing <laughs> out of control. SOS and help. So reflect back to your humble days where you were just because you're work, you're full time, you're a full time mom. I'm a you're full time working. mom. I'm a I'm a full time employee. Like I've got more hats than uh, you know Amelia Bedelia. I I we are doing it all. <laughs> you know I'm an active sorority member. Like you know I'm I you know I have a life. Um, am I? This is a big part of it. Um, and the reality is that, you know, for most of us entrepreneurs, you're starting out in your home and, you know, that's no different. That story is not different here. Mm -hmm. We started here. This is, you know, our kind of operation, you know, everything kind of comes out of my home. And I've shared pictures on social media of, you know, a few hundred boxes either showing up at my door by the, the big truck or, you know, all built in my living room. And, you know, the reality was that we had that oh ship moment when the boxes that come to be, um, that have all the product exceed the space in the house. There's literally no place to put it. And you've got to build boxes and you've got to coordinate to uh, pick up with the, the UPS or USPS. And that caused a big, backlog in our ability to get things out in a timely fashion. Mm -hmm. um, if you could even imagine, we ship hundreds of boxes. And, and I'm always cautious with my numbers and I don't ever throw my numbers around. So I'll just use the number hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of boxes. And we've got to print shipping labels and we've got to organize them in a way that the garment that gets sized for Sarah from Washington to New York, to Maryland, to DC, to Florida, to Georgia, all of that has to be organized in a way that makes it easy for us to grab and pick. And you have to do that in the space of the home. Um, and that has become really challenging. So that moment, that oh shit moment happened earlier this year. Um, right when COVID happened. And it was, we were talking about, okay, well, do we go the warehouse route? Do we um, explore that opportunity? Um, and started having those conversations and said like, I don't think I want that bill. Um, and then started thinking like, we should try fulfillment again. Um, and had a great conversation with Ship Bob. Like I've told you about my rep, Bob, who just is awesome. Give him some shine. Give him some shine. Give him some Come shine. On, Bob. Come on, Bob. <laughs> like, he just kind of, you know, like he's a stand and deliver kind of guy. And I really like that. He was super transparent. He wow. gave me all the information. He knew his business and he knew where my business fit in it. And you're probably thinking, like, oh, did you sign immediately? No, I didn't. Um, <laughs> we kind of, you know, because you're assessing like, how much does this cost? Like we do this ourselves and you're thinking like you could save a few dollars. The reality is we can't scale in my house. <laughs> if we can't. You know, it's not possible. It's, it's not, not possible. possible because if you have 
you've product coming and say your product. I remember one time we had product coming and I asked them, how many boxes is it? They were like, oh, it's 20 boxes of product. So 20 boxes of product for one item, you multiply that times three, you have 60 boxes of product. Could you imagine? Yeah. Like, it's just not feasible. So you can't scale. And that's where these conversations happen. So Bob was great, just wasn't sure we could afford it. We discontinued the conversation, started talking to another vendor. Um, and I shared with you, Kendra, how awful that experience was. Mm -hmm. I, I think this year has really taught me to take stock of how people who you're doing business with value your business. Mm -hmm. And as a black woman, as a, as a, a, a black, you know, as a black woman doing business in this world, I expect that certain things um, happen in a process, happen in the sales process. I want to feel confident. I want to feel assured. I want to trust my partner. I mean, I want to feel really good about it because I'm handing you off to women who are very important to us. Yes. They're my Sarah. And right. how you treat them is a reflection on my brand. And unfortunately, reflection have, on you. it's a reflection on me. As an and I'm not handing off my Sarah to just anybody period. Yeah. That's yeah. the end of it. And I had an unfortunate experience with another vendor um, who will be unnamed, who just really didn't handle the sales process well. And I was really shocked. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, I'll leave it there. I was really, I was disappointed because there was, there was little value placed in our, on, in our business. And I walked away from that conversation and, you know, Bob I waiting in the now. wings, he was just like, come on. <laughs> and I, I was like, come, come on, come on back. And I picked up my conversation with Bob and I'm, Bob did not miss a beat, like not a beat. Go Bob. Um, he just didn't. And he got it. He understood that we were kind of different. We're quarterly. We're not monthly. That's, that's a different warehouse model. Like, yeah, he got it it. At, for every question, he had an answer. Okay. Love it. Love it. You're me. You're, you are me. I mean, I know, people, <laughs> I know what it is. You have an answer for every question and your answer is very reasonable. Right. So coming to ship Bob has been great. Bob Haley's my implementation, you know, coordinator. We're going to ship our first, um, you know, um, subscription box in Q4. And I am that much more confident and self-assured about this partnership working. Um, is everything gonna be perfect? Probably not, but it's gonna be better than what we had. And it frees me up to do some of the innovation and, and big picture thinking that gets lost when you've got a house of boxes that need to be built and you've got Saros to answer emails from because they can't find their things or it's late or whatever the case may be. This makes a huge um, shift in priority um, and absolutely opens us up for more opportunities. We can handle more because we have a trusted partner yeah. who can take the load off of us. So we can do some of these crazy configurations that I'm talking to Sarah's about, you know, behind the scenes on about, you know, doing multiple boxes and things like, like that. We can handle those things because now we have a great partner who's going to be able to do it for us. This was all great. I really think a lot of people get picked up from this, not only just knowing how amazing the finer women are, but how innovative that, how innovative the Greek, like the Greek um, world is. Like yes. you guys are always out there grinding. Um, I see so many Greek brothers and sisters that like, starting successful brands. One that I'm thinking of off the top of my head is, um, we that chicken. I don't know if you heard that, but he went from a food truck to now he has his own sauces and seasonings and grocery stores. And it was because of his history with Kappa Alpha Psi um, and his work in the community that inspired him to. And they, and they encourage that. They encourage entrepreneurship. Yes. They encourage. They push you towards those avenues and routes. Like be your own man, be a standing man in the community, etc. So. You're speaking not only for HBCUs, you're speaking for the Greek community, you're speaking for Jada Pi Beta, you're speaking for the Black community. Like all of this is important. This is what I wanted to translate um, here is just more representation 
of amazing women like yourself that took something that they were passionate about and scaling it, making it make businesses, making it make money. And at the same time, simultaneously um, projecting or mirroring um, how vital your part in the community is like so important to make sure that everyone feels that love when they open up your boxes, when they make those purchases, when they support us, you feel good about it because you know it's going back into the community and you know that you're getting something unique and different because we really put a lot of thought and time into it. So thank you so much for talking ship. Well, thank you so much for having me. What an awesome opportunity. And um, I am so grateful. So thank you for allowing me to talk about the Finer Things 1920 and all it does for the women of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated.